Hi everyone, it's Nikki Jameson here and today I'm just going to do a rather different video just to show you a couple of things I did in the painting of this picture of Tower Bridge, London. So I'm not going to paint it obviously from scratch because this painting did take a long time to do but I did do a speed painting of it so if I post the speed painting you will probably be able to take a look at it and see how it developed. But I did want to show you some steps of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close some of these layers and just start with my blank canvas as far as, as, far as I can here. Okay, so here we are, we're back uh, on the canvas here, and I've closed down all these layers that I used for this particular piece. So I had quite a few layers here. I did combine some layers as I went through it, but uh, some of the main layers I did leave, so hopefully we'll be able to see what I did. So I started with doing uh, filling in the background, this is the plain canvas that I have, by filling it with a very loose... Uh, wash. I think I use uh, burnt umber uh, colour for for the wash. And uh, if I just select by using the Alt key, actually I used, I think I used the grunge brushes for this. I cannot remember which brushes I used, but I think I used grunge at different sizes. Okay, so I just uh, filled in this. I also used some watercolour, so you can see the drips there. And uh, you can see um, I'm just going to try and close this. This is the reference image that I use, but because I wanted to do something different and not just follow the, the photograph, you'll see my painting turned out very, very, very different. So then I added the water, a layer for the water. In fact, um, uh, the water and the sky. And then I added, uh, I painted, it painted in the uh, sky. Okay, after that, I started painting in uh, the main the main part of the bridge now this is a pretty complex painting to do it did take me several hours over a few days and the reason being is that this unless you do something really impressionistic which using the photo is a little bit difficult at least in this rendition of it it is actually quite precise it's a particular color it's got a particular got particular lines and it's it's a very iconic uh, piece of architecture um, tower bridge and it's instantly recognizable so I didn't really want to stray too far from the original but I did want to give some give a different color so you'll see that I've changed the color from my reference so instead of it being uh, this sort of um, it, it's actually gray gray blue and white with uh, the waterline marked here I changed that quite a, quite a bit so anyway let's go to our sky uh, this is like a layer and one thing I also wanted to say here is that I did not do everything in the order that you see here. I do things in a different order uh, and it's not necessarily linear. Now I wanted to open this piece about so you can see I've here I've added the, the, the colour here. I tried to paint that out actually. Um, but what I wanted to show you for this particular painting is that to start this painting, this is an idea of me not thinking linearly for this, um, I actually did a, I actually did two sketches. So the first sketch, which um, I don't even know whether we'll be able to see it. So the first sketch I sketched over something similar to this. It wasn't this particular painting because you can see this is a different, um, this is a different perspective. But I had, I have so many pictures of Tower Bridge that I just sketched it in. Uh, and then what I did for that, after that sketch, which I then locked, and the reason you can't see it is because, um, or see it, is that it's not really, it's not really doing much in the actual picture. I did a, another sketch, and this was the sketch I actually really turned on and off, and I used. So on layer two, there is a sketch, I set it to multiply. If I set it to normal, I see less of it, but I like to set the sketch Oh, that's different. I like to set my sketches if I use sketches, which I have to do for this particular for this particular kind of painting to get the perspective and to get the 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 lines in the way I want and to get the structure in the way I want. I uh, use another layer here 
and I change the opacity. So as I change the opacity up and down, I have more or less of the sketch. So I, as I painted the picture, I used the lines to the sketch lines to guide me and I turned the opacity down. And I, rec I, I recommend you doing something like this if you need some some guidance in sketching. If you're cool with sketching everything in, then you know you don't need to, but sometimes we need a little bit of extra help. And so that's there are many ways to accomplish or solve for a particular problem. So that's one of the ways I, I use. And then you can always turn off the sketch. Oh, see, I actually should have not painted on that sketch. I can see I painted on it, but anyway, I won't save this, hopefully. If you don't want to paint on the sketch, the best thing to do is to lock it and then you won't be able to paint on it. So layer six, and I'm going pretty quickly here. Layer six, I have painted in the bridge. Uh, to get the straight line, I actually used, um, I think I used it. I used in Rebel the, the straight line marker. So, because it was very, very hard to paint just a straight line, you know, even though I made it pretty, pretty large. So I had to, I used the, uh, if you, oh, let's see, is it doing it? I don't know whether they could do it here. So I used the uh, straight line marker and I just, and I painted across, obviously not in one long line. I use a particular palette for this called City, City Night, which I took from different photos, or different paint pictures of the, uh, of the bridge. But I also knew that the colour was, um, was was blue, and I wanted to exaggerate it a bit, so I was able to I was able to uh, mimic the colour. So I obviously did more work to this painting, okay. Um, and on this layer, I did most of it. So you can see at the back, I did the buildings or the the skyline. There is a skyline here. And it's not meant to be a realistic painting by any stretch of the imagination. I just wanted to get the key bits in, but I wanted to try and be accurate. So particularly in things like the um, the waterline, which is quite significant. We're at low, at low tide, and I painted that in uh, darker. So as I said, um, this actually did take quite a while to do. So... I've actually absolutely no intention of doing it at uh, the speed that I did it at, but I will hopefully share the, uh, the the speed paint, and then you can you can have a look at how I built it up. And areas like this, like the um, the balustrade here, the top bit of the bridge, took a long time to do, as did the top of the tower. And as I say, I'm never i never think a painting is actually complete i'm still sort of seeing ways i can improve it but what i'm going to do is that i'm not going to do it on this particular painting i'm going to perhaps do a different painting and then see if i get uh, something different because really that's the way to improve your painting is to is to paint the same thing over and over or similar and then you, you develop your level of confidence that way. You don't really develop painting or how to paint by watching videos. I know I'm doing this and I'm showing it, showing it to you, but it's not really going to be the meat and potatoes of this channel because I think you would learn more by me showing you what I actually used and what I did to where I got it because I always, I always change it and everybody has a different way of painting. So if you get uh, committed to somebody's way of painting you will never develop your own and you'll be very you'll get frustrated because you'll see people doing things depending on the confidence they have and if you don't have the same experience or confidence or interest in it you will not be able to achieve the same thing you have to develop your own voice and your own painting strokes and not even feel the need to share it your process is how you do it if you care to share it by all means go ahead but never feel that you have to do that okay so I try to use like different tones here dark and light for uh, for the side of the bridge there was sunshine uh, or shadows flowing on the bridge I think one of the photos I took was at 
was in the evening and I tried to kind of use that um, in the yellow that I have here for the sunlight and in my final version I think I actually got it but it, it was not that easy to get. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you um, I did this so that's that layer uh, is the boat so when I first started painting this the boat was was in the center and I did uh, and some you'll see that as these layers get filled in I also painted on some of the different layers even though I was doing something specific um, it's really good to use layers in Rebel or even Corel Painter because then if you don't like something you can just change that particular layer okay so um, I'm just gonna blend I'm just gonna blend this with this grunge painting uh, paper sorry or this grunge brush and try not to ruin my painting um, yeah so I removed the boat from the center here because it was I showed it to I uh, showed it to my husband and he made the remark that it, it was kind of distracting from Tower Bridge which is really you know when, once you see it you're gonna look just at that and everything else is kind of like a distraction or should really add to the add to the scene so I thought I wanted the boat to be there so I just moved it to the side I mean I'm on paint now if I put some more on the water here this is the boat layer and I didn't use this blue before so goodness knows what I'm doing here uh, I like to use some white to just get some color variation but again I spent almost a whole session doing the uh, water just to get the the water waves and I still wasn't really satisfied with it but you know I it, at some point you just got to you just got to move on and anyway I wasn't doing it to really show to really show any of this you can see how I did it if I share the time lapse and I probably will share the, the time lapse and you can look at it at speed okay so but one of the things you can do if you're painting here you can select um, paint from the actual painting and that helps you keep your colors to a minimum I use I try to keep the colors to a minimum which is fairly easily done because the bridge is not like varying colors um, I wanted to tone down the the brown a little bit I used a deeper shade but it, it didn't look it didn't look right because the bridge is actually gray so if I did that it would look a bit weird so as I said I am going to um, most probably do another painting and try and incorporate whatever I learned from this particular painting and solve for the issues and not really issues but things I, I thought that oh you know what would it look like if I did it this way I use a what if type of approach I'm also painting this painting in uh, coral painter just to see if I get a different experience uh, for it from doing so um, but yeah I wasn't really happy with with doing it in the gray color because it wasn't really I wanted something bright and I wanted to use this nice sort of orangey brown so that's what I went with and at the end of the day it's your own expression that you want to do I'm not going to save this or if I do I will just save it for the video but okay so that's what I did for that and that was ma that's mainly what I did for uh, this painting um, I think that those are all the layers that I did I did them in different order the, I think the I came back to the sky and I added some more um, clouds and paint to to the sky to give it a little bit more oomph um, so I still find it a little bit of a challenge to remember which brushes I used so I think we'll leave the painting there as I said if I share the time-lapse with this you'll be able to see what I did in the time-lapse it gives you an idea of how we got from A to B and what I did for this painting but for now it's a really quick whistle-stop tour of what I did for this painting I'm still to some extent working on it and maybe you can learn something about using Rebel to paint your own pictures 
and uh, come up with your own uh, with your own ideas and your own inventions thanks very much for watching this video i hope i will see you in another video take care bye